Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Silver Lake United Methodist Church. My name is Alex Rosso, and I am the pastor of this congregation. And I see we have a couple people joining on Zoom. We have a couple people joining on Facebook Live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship. It is a, it's a joy to, uh, to have you here, and I'm glad that we are able to connect in technology in new and different ways. And my hope is that through this technology and where you are gathered in your places and spaces, that you'll experience God's presence in your life today. And I, I wanted to start by having a, a couple of announcements, and if you have something you'd like to share, I'd invite you to uh, put it in the comments and, and share it with one another. But a couple of, I, I know that everybody uh, is, is uh, coming together and supporting from all parts of our community to support the, the lunch program and lunch ministry, and so I just wanted to give you an update. And so we've been doing it for, for five weeks, uh, and so this week we'll start our, our sixth, uh, sixth week, so five weeks is 25 days, and uh, so far we've been able to, uh, to feed uh, or give away 1,433 lunches in the five weeks that we've been doing, and I think that is uh, simply amazing how uh, the, the Spirit is moving through uh, the volunteers that are volunteering, the people who are, are donating uh, in, in, the, in the lunch ministry too. And so I'm grateful to be a, a part of that ministry with you. And also we've been uh, giving away uh, Operation Backpack Bags that are distributed by Topeka North Outreach, and that's part of a partnership that we have with them. And, and so far in the, in the five weeks that we've been doing that, we've handed out uh, 375 bags. And those bags have non-perishable items uh, that, that are uh, supplying food that they can take home. It has like a breakfast item, uh, something that they can heat up, and a uh, uh, and just a bunch of snacks that will provide nutrition uh, through them. I've calculated that we've had around a, a little 21 or more volunteers that have participated in the ministry, and then also over 50 people who have, who have donated, whether you've donated financially, uh, with goods, or with your time, uh, over 50 people, organizations, and businesses. And so I wanted to, uh, to celebrate uh, that with you today. And then also, I wanted to recognize the uh, birthdays that we have starting today and going to next, uh, to next Sunday. And that uh, Logan Miller's birthday is today. And uh, so happy birthday, Logan, today. And then Diane Martinick's birthday is today. And then uh, Thelma Bray's birthday is on April 23rd. And uh, Barry Thayer's birthday is next Sunday, April 26th. And so uh, with those in mind and that celebration, I invite you to join me in the opening prayer. God, we come together, gathered today, to, to celebrate you, to join together as a community where we can uh, care for one another, support one another, and learn and grow in our knowledge of you. Open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts to how you're moving uh, in us and through us today. In your holy name we pray, amen. And so I'd invite you to, to join me in the, in the call to worship. It's on our Facebook page if you're on Facebook, but also if you're on our, our mail, email mailing list, uh, it's on our email mailing list too. So I'd invite you to take a moment to find that. And if you aren't on our email find, uh, mailing list, I'd uh, mention that in the comments and we can add you to it. So let's begin with the call to worship. Rejoice, friends, for the Lord had called us to these spaces together. We come, we come joyfully, for we have heard the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Open our spirits to receive all of God's blessings. May God, may God shower blessings, blessings upon us so that we may in turn bless God by our service to others. May God open our hearts and our spirits to receive with confidence the good news of Easter. Alleluia. So now I invite you to... Uh, Join us in song as Steve will lead us in the, the worship song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship.
Generous God, we thank you for your presence with us in all our lives. As we gather this morning, we are reminded of the many times we have come to a threshold in our lives. At these crossroads, we sometimes feel overwhelmed, we worry, are confused, and have a doom and gloom mentality. Today we lay all of these emotions and feelings down at your feet, and replace them with the memory and excitement of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remind us again that through all of our troubles, doubts, and fears, your power, your mercy, and your love are with us. Amen. And so now I invite you to uh, uh, pass the peace of Christ virtually with one another and, and welcome one another, say hi, and uh, let them know that you are here. I was going to put the, the scripture up, but I realized that was probably really minuscule for everyone to read. <laughs> and so, uh, please join me in reading scripture. I invite you to uh, open your Bible to Luke 24, uh, 13 through 35. So if you have it, I encourage you to do that. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus. About seven miles from Jerusalem, they were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were there discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. Jesus said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped. Their faces were downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one that would redeem Israel. All of these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of these were, were with us when we went to the tomb and found just as a woman had said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, your dull minds kept you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interrupted for them the things written about himself and all the scriptures, started, starting with Moses and going through the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, 
blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us on the road to Emmaus and when he explained the scriptures to us? They got up right away and then went to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I invite you to continue to worship with us as we are led in song by Steve with the song, Lord, I lift your name on high. I picture Jan Lowry clapping and raising her hands and going like this when, uh, when I hear that song. And so I, I, I'm glad that I, I visualize all your, your faces uh, when, we, when we worship like that together. And so I think that our, our the power to uh, imagine all of our, our faces as we gather together, even though we're apart, the power to imagine our faces is really uh, powerful. And so with that in mind, I, I, I've prepared this message about uh, the road to Emmaus. And the road to Emmaus, uh, usually this Sunday in uh, traditional worship, is, is reserved for the story of, of Thomas and, and doubting Thomas. And so we join Thomas and we talk about doubt and faith and how, that, uh, how they go together and how they uh, impact each other. But I thought this Sunday uh, to focus on the story of the walk to Emmaus because it is a powerful story and, uh, and it's very, uh, as I was reading this story, it, it spoke to me about what we are all experiencing uh, in this time. And so as we begin, uh, before we begin, I want you to watch uh, this video and I want you to, to see, uh, to, to count the amount of times the team in white passes the ball to each other. And so watch this video clip. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The 
The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? And so the quote there at the end says, it's easy to miss something that you're not looking for. And so uh, often when we, when we, when we join this uh, traveling, uh, the traveling disciples on the, on the road to Emmaus, they aren't looking for, to encounter Jesus. And so when they encounter Jesus, they are unaware. And so I was reading a, a, a study about uh, our openness to things that might seem out of, out of context or out of place. And uh, this, this research said it was called this phenomenon called inattentional blindness. And people, and it said the study went on to say that people experience this when they are so focused on one thing that they completely fail to see something else right before their eyes. And I found this to be fitting to the disciples as they are on the road to Emmaus on this seven mile walk uh, back to Emmaus from Jerusalem. They are so focused on what has happened and talking about that, that they fail to realize what is right in front of them and right before their eyes. And so Jesus, uh, the Gospel of Luke tells this story. They found this, uh, found this, Luke found this to be a unique resurrection story where uh, they, 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 they go to Jesus. Jesus is, is unrecognized and they, they join, he joins the two disciples following the recent events that happened in Jerusalem. And so, as I begin to wonder, the, the seven miles to Jerusalem, how, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, how long would that have, have taken? And uh, if you're a, a fast walker, uh, you can take like 15 minutes a mile, and so it would take like an hour and 45 minutes. But if they were kind of leisurely uh, walking, talking about the events that happened, I think it might have taken about 30 minutes a mile as they're, they're not in a, in a real big hurry. They're kind of saying, okay, well, this, this happened, and they're processing, they're... They might have stopped and had a, had a conversation, uh, had, had a lunch, and it, that might have taken three and a half hours to discuss what they had just witnessed. And so Jesus appears, and they, they appear let down. Uh, we, they, the scripture tells us that we had hoped that this would happen. So they're sad, and they're stunned by what the women, by what the two Marys have told them, that Jesus' body was not in the tomb. They were stunned. They didn't believe it. And so here we find Jesus coming to them when they are puzzled and confused. The stranger, because of the scripture says that they didn't recognize Jesus, so this stranger appears to them. And that got me to think about how often do we, are we approached by strangers, and we might be so focused on the, our task at hand or what we are doing or might be going to point A or B that we don't see who is in front of us. And so this stranger, that this time they still don't know it's Jesus, so I'm going to refer to Jesus as the stranger, asked them, what, what happened? What are, what are you so sad about? And the, so the disciples tell Jesus this in verses 19 through 24. He said to them, what things? When they, Jesus was asking the disciples, what things had just happened? The disciples said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words. And I wanted to pause right there before we go on to verse 20. Because of his powerful words and deeds, the disciples knew what Jesus had done. They had, had witnessed his, his miracles. They might have been there when he turned the, the loaves and fishes to feed 5,000 people. They had, they had seen all these things. They had witnessed his miracles, but yet they had trouble believing what Jesus said when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so we continue in scripture, and, and the disciples said, He was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some woman from our group have left us stunned. And see, here's where we see that, that the disciples are confused, they're fearful. 
because they don't know what happened to Jesus' body. They are sad. And so they went, went on to say, Then they went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they'd even seen visions of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who weren't with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had said. They didn't see him. And then we read later, as we continue in this journey of Scripture, we see that Jesus explained what was written about him in the Scriptures for them. And he, he went on to, to bless the bread and broke it for them. And in that moment, they, they were able to identify who Jesus was in a flash. They gained an insight and remembered. Jesus explained his Scriptures to all his disciples. He taught them. To reflect on the big picture, he, took, he taught them to reflect on the stories of Moses and Exodus, the, the scripture in Psalms, the picture of, of them leaving, fleeing uh, Egypt and, and the Red Sea part, and he, he drew upon their tradition as they remembered the stories. He, remember, he helped them to remember the stories that he taught them, the stories that, the, of justice and salvation that would happen. He commissioned, then he goes on to commission them to share his message with others, to share their experience of the resurrected Jesus with others. And that's what we see them doing at the end of this passage. They went on to, to share. They went on to invite because they were open. And so I think in this moment when they, when they witnessed, when the, the, Jesus broke the bread with the disciples and they remembered, is when they moved from Fear, when they moved from sadness, when they moved from confusion to hope and excitement. And is it in this hope and excitement that they had to share that with others? They had to go share it with the disciples that were in the room that, and one can assume that they were still in the upper room, that Jesus broke bread with them, that were still in the room. So they had to go and share this hope, this excitement, this joy that they had just witnessed. And so Jesus, they invited Jesus into their home. They invited Jesus into their home. And that has multiple layers for, for us today. Is each one of you who are worshiping with us online and in your spaces, you're inviting Jesus into your home. And in inviting Jesus into our home, we're open to experiencing Jesus' presence in our lives in new and profound ways. <coughs> And so the disciples, as we, as we go in and journey about these two disciples that were uh, on this road to Emmaus, I want to focus on them for a couple moments. And so as we read about this story and the other gospel messages, we learned that it was uh, Clopas and Cleopas, that they were likely the, the, the same uh, person, but they're used uh, to show that it, was, it might have been a, a married couple that was on the road to Emmaus walking back from Jerusalem. And they asked their companion, to, this companion that joined them on the road, to stay with them. And I keep going back to that because I think that is really important to the story. They asked this stranger to come and stay with them and to break bread with them and to have dinner with them. And what would have happened if they didn't invite this stranger into their home? Because remember, we did, they didn't know at that time that it was Jesus. What would have happened if they didn't invite this stranger into their home? Maybe for us today, it's inviting, uh, when all the, the restrictions are lifted, maybe it's inviting uh, a neighbor. Maybe it's reaching out and calling a, a neighbor, uh, inviting them somewhere with us to be present with us as we experience Christ in our lives and to share the love of Christ with them. If they hadn't had invited Jesus into their home, they would still be confused, they would still be sad, they would still be puzzled. Who, who knows how long they would have stayed in that, in that state? They would have missed on, out on the joy of Jesus in their homes being present with them. And so that leads me to the question, how do you as an individual or as a family go about inviting Jesus into your daily lives? How have you learned to recognize Christ's presence in the ordinary things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Are you open to Christ's presence in your life and how Christ might be, but might be moving in you and through you? And the juxtaposition here between the, the disciples and the, the leaders uh, of, the, of the Jewish synagogues, I think, uh, is very, uh, very worth uh, investigating. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so closed minds of the Jewish leaders in the synagogue uh, led to his, his crucifix, crucifixion and, uh, and not really paying attention and, and, and learning from Jesus. The resurrection called on Jesus' followers to re re rethink the assumptions that they had. And in this passage of scripture, we see that, that Jesus' words, when he broke bread for them and said, this is my body, it opened their minds to a whole new world of understanding, a whole new world about how Jesus is with us and walks with us on all the journeys that we take through life. Have you experienced this kind of opening as you've encountered Jesus? This opening to a way, new way of experiencing Christ's presence in your life. So the disciples on this journey showed us two qualities that I think are essential to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And one that is, that is the, the spirit of invitation and inviting people. Whether that's uh, sharing a, a Facebook post or, or, or calling someone, inviting someone, but it's that spirit of invitation for someone to experience in Christ's presence. Maybe it's you sharing your story about how uh, Christ changed or transformed you. Maybe it's just sharing your story about how you saw God show up in your life with them. But it's that spirit of invitation that these disciples had. And then when they invited Jesus into their home, and then the second thing is this openness that they had. This openness to Jesus' teaching to them as they broke bread around the table with them. And so how are you open to how Jesus might be teaching, how Jesus' presence might be teaching you in new ways this week? Challenging, maybe it's challenging what you have thought. Maybe it's uh, strengthening what you're, you have thought, but how are you opening, open to Jesus' teaching in your lives this week? And so I came across this book. This book was called Wired to Create, and it says this about how we, when we remain and have an open posture, about how that affects to how we think and how we perceive what is going on around us. And it says in this book, Wired to Create, it says the creativity of open people stems from a drive of for cognitive exploration of one's inner and outer worlds. This curiosity to examine things from all angles may lead people high in openness to see the more than the average person, or as another research put, team put it, to discover complex possibilities laying dormant in so-called familiar envi environments. So I want to say that again to discover complex possibilities laying dormant in so-called familiar environments. And so these, the disciples that were on the, the road to Emmaus, there's my, no doubt within my mind that they had made that journey multiple times, back and forth to Jerusalem, to Emmaus, whether it was to go grocery shopping or get supplies, maybe they had a family there, maybe they were meeting the other disciples, maybe they were following Jesus, but they had made that trip back and forth many, many times. But yet, they were open to complex realities that might have laid, that complex possibilities that were laying dormant in this familiar environment. And so how are you remaining open to all these possibilities and how the Spirit might be moving in your lives as we, we experience quarantine and have fallen into these routines. For, for me, it's the, how have I realized these complex realities as I, as I might lay, lay on the couch and uh, read, read a new book? How may I experience these new realities as I, as I play a card game? Because even in the, these ordinary things that we do, God is moving and is present with us. How do we recognize Christ's presence 
and these ordinary things. And so one thing that I, I, I have shared with you many times before is uh, the daily pattern of prayer called the Examine by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And uh, I'm just going to, to share and we're going to walk through this uh, together today. And it's one way to begin to cultivate God's presence in your lives on a day-to-day -day routine. And so the first step in the prayer of examines is to simply ask the question, what are the blessings in my life? What are the blessings in my life? And if you have a pen and paper next to you, I invite you just to, to write these down as you, as you come across these. And then give thanks for these blessings. And then the second step is, where did I meet God or see God at work today? So where did I meet God or see God at work today? And so, so far today, one of the things that I've been able to count on each day this week, uh, we've had beautiful sunrises and sunsets most days. And so I know when I wake up and see the sunrise, I, I automatically see God at work today. And so I wonder where you might see God at work today. And then the third step is, what happened in my day? What did I learn? How did I feel? And then simply reflect on that. And then the, the, the fourth part is, where did I fall short of God's will today? And then this is the part where that, 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 that it is challenging as we reflect about, reflect about our day, like, uh, for me, it's right now, it's uh, lots of uh, losing patience. <laughs> Seems to be, where did I fall short of, of God's will today? Especially as I, I teach uh, Claire and Lydia and Miriam, where, where did I fall short of God's will? It's, it's patience, or uh, being overly grumpy, uh, or where did I fail to reflect God's will is when I realize that I need uh, time to myself to regroup and, and center myself so I can be my best self for my family. And then as you go about your day, this is a part of confession, where we confess these times in our life of the day that we fail to meet God's will, or we fall short. And then the next step is to offer tomorrow's plans and yourself to God. Offer, if you know what you're going to be doing tomorrow, offer that to God, that it may be a blessing not only to you, but to uh, those who might uh, see you as they drive by doing those things, or if it's uh, posting something to Facebook, that people might see it as a reflection of God's will or God's of the Holy Spirit working in and through you. Offer tomorrow's plans and yourself to God. And then step six is uh, of the seven steps is pray for the needs of others in your life. Pray for the needs of others. And so part of this is how we come along and support our, our community and encourage one another, although we are distant from one another, and that's praying for each other. And that's step six. And so I invite you in this time, before we go to prayer and a little bit later, maybe if you're online and you want to, to share your needs and how we can pray for you, I invite you to do that in the comment section. Uh, one of mine is I ask you to, to pray for the, the need for, for patience and the, the, page, page, the pray for me to be less grumpy uh, as we, we go about this next week. And then the close with the Lord's Prayer. And so those are the, the, the seven steps that St. Ignatius said were essential to the examine and the daily pattern of prayer. And I'll, I'll include this in, in my email to you all and also I'll, I'll put it up on our uh, Facebook page, so you can have this at home and, and refer to it. And so that's part of inviting God's presence into your lives. And so now I want to spend a moment to reflect on how we can be open to God's presence in our life. And so uh, one thing, as, as, I, as, I, as I joked about this, is uh, I thought about potlucks, because this story on Italy ends with Jesus breaking bread with the two disciples in their home, and I came across these funny memes. There's lots of funny things out there about United Methodists and potlucks, and so uh, I wanted to share those with you. 
Uh, the first one says, uh, what does it take to be a United Methodist? And it says, believe in Jesus and own a 9 by 13 pan. <laughs> and I thought that would be funny. I, I chuckled when I, when I saw that. And then do you remember the, the Geico commercials where the two people, they, the two guys, they used to stand up with a, a guitar and a banjo and they'd ask, how happy are they? And I found one that uh, says, how happy are they? And it says, as happy as a United Methodist at a potluck. <laughs> and so they're playing the guitar and, and singing along. And I thought those were funny because we often, uh, at least we often joke about how potlucks and United Methodists go hand in hand. And uh, in fact, I think, uh, I think if this story shows us about how God shows up around the table and how we, when we break bread together, God shows up in new and exciting ways. But we just have to be open to how God is showing up. And I think that is the power of the potluck and why we gravitate around the table and celebrate with one another when we have these feasts together. Because God moves in new and exciting ways when we all gather together around the table. And I'm looking forward to the day where we can gather as a community and, and break bread together in person and to, to celebrate uh, with the potluck because I have no doubt in my mind that God will show up and do something wonderful there through you and through everyone gathered. And I think Jesus, is, uh, his, his story about Jesus backs me up that God will do something powerful when we gather around a table and break bread together. I just think about all the things that Jesus could have done to these two di with these two disciples to show that he was Jesus. He was the resurrected Christ. He could have pour poured out and, and done all one of his, his many miracles, uh, but he chose just simply to break bread with them and to eat with them. And for me, that shows Jesus' earthliness. It shows his his, his humanness to sit down and to gather around a table with us, breaking bread, sharing his love, his grace and mercy, his, his news, his exciting news, his joy to them. And I love how simple this story is. He asks to eat, or the, and they, they feed him, and, and Jesus eats with them, breaks bread with them. He doesn't downplay his humanity or hide this from the disciples, this essential need that all of us have to eat, to sustain us. And I think that shows also this part of the story that when we dine together and we spend time in prayer, when we spend time in Jesus' presence, it sustains us. Not only for today, but for the new and exciting ways that Jesus will move in and through us. When we break bread together, Jesus shows up and we are sustained. And I think in eating, uh, Jesus opens us and invites us to, to live more honestly with one another. Not as a liability, but as a gift. And what if we begin to see our needs as food, our needs for rest, our needs for balance, as a way of sharing in life, as Jesus did with these disciples in Emmaus. The need to pause in our business and eat a solid meal, our need to stop and rest, are not personal failures. They're an invitation to embrace life as Jesus did. They're an invitation to embrace life as Jesus did. And so that got me thinking about each one of us and our experience as we, as we go forward and how it's related to COVID-19 and what we are experiencing. And it led me to think of our status as, as, as human beings and as, as creatures. And I, I began to realize that I'm grateful for all the ways that we are bracing life. We are bracing life in these new but yet simple ways. Embracing life through the washing of our hands, the covering our mouths, and caring for each other's bodies as we social distance from one another. We recognize our, both the, the fragility and strength of our human bodies as we embrace this life together. And, that, and, and in the world of social distancing, many of us has taken immediate effect and shift to, uh, to this virtual presence with one another. 
And I, as I begin to, to think about that, well, it might, may seem that we are, are far away from each other as we worship with one another. Our, all each one of us are in our unique spaces. I think in certain ways we have become more intimate with each other. Because as I see in, in this, uh, for the people that are joining us on Zoom, I normally don't see in, in your living room or into the spaces where you're at as we worship together. So in a way, while we seem further apart, we are more intimate with each other. I think of the, the homes as I join all these Zoom meetings with pastors across Kansas and Nebraska and friends and families from California to New York to China that I normally don't am not invited into their living room, seeing their, their the spaces and their uh, rooms that they are in. And so in a way, I think we have become more intimate with each other. We've seen a more informal but yet personal side of each other as we join these Zoom meetings and, and see and interact with each other. We see the people's decor. We've interacted with each other's kids. We've heard dogs bark in the background and uh, seen cats move in and throughout the room. We've invited each other into our homes, whereas before, we just met in this space. And in a way, so in that ways, we become more intimate. And so, although we're not in, our, in this place together in person, we become more intimate with each other. And so we become the more aware, this deeper awareness of each other and our spaces. And I think that's what the disciples also experienced as they invited Jesus into their home. They had this deeper awareness of who Jesus was, what he was teaching and talking about, that they moved from fear and sadness to hope and excitement. And so what does that mean for us as Christians today? Uh, I feel as we, for many of us, we have this understanding of who we think God is and who God, how God uh, acts in the world. We've come to know God. We've heard uh, the stories. We've experienced God in, in the same way for many years. But I'm wondering if this might be a time where we could see a new side of God. When was the last time we were truly opening to experience a newness of how God is, is moving in and through us? A newness of how God is moving in the world. How long has it been since we've asked God to show us more of who He is? What would it be like to find new intimacy with Jesus Christ, our Savior? What would it be like to have a deeper connection with Jesus? I'm wondering if even today we might open our hearts and our minds to knowing God more personally and deeply as individuals and as a community by simply asking God to surprise us. God surprise us in ways that are unimaginable to us now. Surprise us. Maybe that's a breath prayer that you can have throughout the week. Simply say, God, surprise me. Simply asking God to surprise us in ways in what yet we have yet to experience His presence in our lives. I long to think and, and to know that God continues to uh, speak to us and reveal to us more and more of who God is and who, how God moves in and through the world day by day. We just have to ask God and to be open to God's surprises in our lives. And through this new understanding, our relationship with God can be stronger, deeper, and more intimate than ever before. And so after dinner, the disciples returned to Jerusalem. They were fired up. They were excited to tell their story of how Jesus showed up on the road to Emmaus and ate dinner with them and changed their lives. When was the last time you were excited and fired up to share a story with someone about how Jesus showed up in your life? Please join me in prayer. Loving Lord, keep us alert to the chances to faithfully share your story. Give us the courage that when we are afraid to have confidence, 
when unsure, passion, when indifferent, and help us to share our own personal stories of how you changed our hearts and changed our lives. Amen. Let's continue to worship by, uh, with our offering and by giving God's tithes and our offerings. And uh, part of that is uh, to, to come together as a community to, to, uh, to support and care for one another because our ministry is reaching a wide amount of people. The last, I think the, the average for the last uh, four weeks in worship has been anywhere between 300 and 400 people who have been joining us online. And your tithe, God's tithes and your offerings make this possible. Your tithes and your offerings make the, the over 1,400 lunches that have been given out to the community possible. And so I invite you now uh, to, to prepare uh, for this time of communion as uh, our offering as Steve uh, leads us in the offering. You can also go to the, the link on the Facebook page if you'd like to give your God's tithes or offering there, or you can also... Uh, if you have an envelope uh, uh, there next to you, prepare your tithe and offering that way. Let's continue to worship by getting God's tithes in our offering. <laughs> This, uh, this uh, one of my friends shared with me about uh, this is why we pray, and it's a, a little graphic about uh, 
little graphic that says uh, three people uh, on a walking along the road with a board over their head and uh, there's a space in the, in the bottom of the road and so as the first person goes across uh, the two behind them are are, are his uh, his stretcher bearers as I would like to say and uh, so he the person doesn't fall into the hole and then the the, the first person gets across uh, the journey and then the, the, the second person is over the hole and so the first and the third person are uh, supporting and, and caring for and nurturing the middle person and then the first two people are across the hole and then the third person has to cross and the third person is supported and encouraged by the other two who are carrying it and then they are all three across and it says this is why we pray for each other and I thought that was a powerful graphic of how uh, when we pray for one another, how we come along beside one another and care for one another and support one another and nurture one another. And so I invite you uh, this week to uh, pray for our uh, community. And in the, the weekly email, there's a, a list of everyone who you can be uh, praying for. And if you'd like to be added to that list or would like to have a prayer request that you want added to that list, I invite you to uh if you have my, my phone, you can text me or you can email the church at e3slumc at gmail.com and we will add that prayer request to the list so we can keep you all in prayer. Or you can also put it in the comments. I know some of you have put some in the comments and uh, we can add those to the prayer request too. So I invite you to this time uh, of centering yourself as we center ourselves uh, before we go to prayer, but turn your eyes upon Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for showing up in ordinary ways, but yet extraordinary. We give you thanks and for all the ways you show up in our lives, from the sunrise to the sunset, to the, the birds chirping all around us, to the snow to the rain and the pitter-patter on our windows that relaxes and soothes us. We give you thanks for showing up in the season of spring, bringing hope to us as we witness the blooming of flowers. We give you thanks for all the ways you move, live, and breathe through us. God, we pause in this moment to offer our own prayer request to you and to reflect on how you have moved through us, but also to confess where we might have fallen, fallen short this week. God, we give you thanks for showing up in each one of our lives. But we also give you thanks for forgiveness. For where we fell short of your will for our lives, or where we may have caused someone pain or hurt someone, intentionally or unintentionally, we give you thanks for your forgiveness. But we also ask for you to you move through us and be your healing agents. 
in the world, to bring peace, to bring hope, to bring love. Because as we remember, you make beautiful things out of dust. You make beautiful things out of us. Help us to grow closer to you. Help us to be a, more of a reflection of you in each moment of our day. God, we pray for all those in our community who are ill. We pray for them to receive the, the health care that they need, the health care that leads them to recovery and healing and strength and sustains them. God, we pray for all the, all the teachers and all the administrators and all the people who are preparing lunches for students, all the people who are essential workers and going to their work. We pray for them, Lord. May you give them safety and health and protection. We pray for the, the medical world as they are on the front lines, the people working on groceries in grocery stores, for all those people, Lord, that are on the front lines. We pray that you are, are with them. We pray for them to receive the proper personal protective equipment that they need to do their job and be safe. We pray for our, the leaders of our country, for the leaders of the world, that you guide and lead them as they, as they, they plan for what our future might look like. Guide and lead their discernment. God, I, I pray for, for everyone that, that is gathering with us today. I pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them. For them to have an openness to how your Spirit might move in and through them. Help them to live boldly and courageously and share their stories over the phone or in messages or through Zoom calls or whatever virtual media they use with one another. Share their stories of how you have transformed their lives. We pray all these things the same way that the, Jesus taught his disciples to pray, by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to, to stand or, or maybe you want to join hands with those you're worshiping with as we sing the closing hymn, May You Run and Not Grow Weary, led by Steve.
And, and so for the, for the benediction, I wanted to share with you that we, uh, uh, Steve and I, we continue, we're continuing to adapt to uh, make this worship experience feel like you are, are with each other and that it's, it's just like you are, are here to the best. I like that, Clara. Let it rain. <laughs> and so to, to make this worship experience feel like you are, are with each other. And so if you have any suggestions, please uh, email, email the, the church or text me. Give me a call and let us know. But know that we are, are working on things to, to make this better. And, uh, and hopefully in this next week we'll have some new equipment uh, arrive that uh, make this feel like you are here and we're able to, to capture things better. But I just want to applaud and give thanks to Steve for, for all he has done, the hours he has spent researching, uh, talking to uh, tech people to see how we might uh, worship together in, in, in this new and exciting way, but to do it sustainably in the future, but also to make it more uh, user-friendly and uh, have the ability to interact with each other more. And so I just want to just say uh, thank you for Steve for all he is doing uh, to make this possible. And so with that in mind, I invite you to receive the benediction. May you go forward uh, in, in, from your homes if you're going outside, but wherever you're at, may the peace of Christ meet you. And, I, and may the the story of the disciples of inviting and being open, may you realize the way that Christ is moving in and through you in new and exciting ways, not only today, but in the, in the days and weeks ahead. God bless you and be with you, and may the Lord's face, may the Lord's light shine upon you. Amen.